מול אלמוד, ונגדו התורן חקר, דול לדול, נשמע מה עשיך, מול עתיך יגידו, הדר כבוד עודיך, ואיזה בני עודיך עשויך, ואין זו זונתיך יאמרו, גבולה תכה ספרנה, זכר, נעשו בך יביעו, ובשבתך תכה ננו, חנו מלחו מאדוני, אין לך פעם וגבול חסר, טוב, אדוני לכל פי נחמה ולכל מעשר, יודוך, אדוני לכל מעשר, יחד וחסידיך ולכוך, יבוא, מלכותך יאמרו, גבולה תכה דבר, ולהודיע על בני אדם גבולותיו. מלכות או מלכות לך, מלכות כל העולמים, מלכות לך בכל דור ודור, סומך, אדוני לכל הנוף אלים, וזוקר לכל הכיפופים, אין יכול אליך יספרו, ואתה נותן אלוהים לך בעיתו, פתח את ידיך ומשביע לכל חי רצון, צדיק אדוני בכל דרכיו, וחסיד לכל מעשיו, קרוב אדוני לכל קוראיו, כל השיק לא באמת, שומר יושיהם, שומר אדוני כל העולם, ואת כל אלה שם ישמיד, תהילת אדוני דבי פי, נברך כל בסוף שם חשוב לעולם ועד. הללויה, הללי נפשי ואדוני, הללי אדוני בחיי, ותאמר הללי לא חי בעודי, אל תצחוק בנביאים, לבין הדת של נאות ישועה, שתי רוחו ישוב לאדמתו, ביום ההוא אבידו שעונותיו, ושיר של יעקב בעזרו, סברו אדוני אלוהיו, שתי שמיים בארץ, את הימי כושר בם, שומר למי לעולם, עושים משאל לעשוקים, נותן נחנה לעבים, אדוני מטיל עשורים, אדוני בוגר עברים, אדוני עסוקי פרפים, אדוני עסוקים, אדוני שומר גנים, אטום האמנה יעודד, דרך לשם יעבד, ימלוך אדוני לעולם, אולי איך שיהיה נדון בדור, הללויה, הללויה, כי טוב גם בלעלי נקנעים, נבט אל הבוני ירושלים אדוני, ותחי ישראל יכנס, הרופא לשמור נפחיו, חמש עשרה מותם, בוני מספר לכוכבים, לכולם שמות נקרא, גדול אדוני נדבר כוח, ונדבר אדוני מספר, מאוד עד הנביא אדוני, שמיר לשם עד הארץ, אלו לאדוני בתודה, זמנו לנו מכינות, המכסה שמיים באביב, המכינה הזאתר, המסמיח לי רצין, נותן לי במה לחמה, לבני עור לשוטי גלאו, לא בגולת הסוס יחפש, לא בשוקי האיש יוצא, נוסיע אדוני דיריו, את המעניינים לעשות, שבחיים שלום את אדוני, הלל יורייך ציון, כחזק בלי השערייך, ולך מלאק בגביך, עשם לברך שלום, חלם עדים יסביך, השולח נוטו ארץ, המהר הירוס דברו, הנוטים של הכס העמד, כפול כאפי יבזן, משליך כרוך לבדים, נהיה כרתו מי יעמוד, שחט ולא מיישם, יושב בכל יישום מים, אגיד לרב יעקב, וכאב שעתיו לישראל, לא עשה חן לכל גוי, ומשתים בעל ידע אום, הללויה, 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 הללו שנים וכל שופטי הארץ, ואחרונים ונערים בגדולות, וכנים מיין ואין, יהלו את שמונה גנסגל שמונה עודו, ודוע על עצי שמיים, ויען כן אמו לכל החסידת, ונסרם בגרובו, הללויה, הללויה, שיר עולם השיר חדש, תהילתו מעל הסינים, סלח ישראל ומרסף, ונץ וניון יגים במלכם, יהלו שמו מחול, טוב וכן עושה מלולו, כי נושא אדוני מעמו, שאני אנביא בישועה, יען עשו עסקים בכבוד, ונאו שלא אותם, לא מודם בגנונם, ואוכל בפגיעה בידם, תעשו נקרא בגויים, ברוך הבא לאומים, יעשו מאחרים מזיגים, ונכבדים בחבלי ברזל, ועשו בהם משקל כתוב אדר הוא, וכל עשידיו, הללויה, 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 בקודשו, הללו בגיע עוזו, הללו בגבולותיו, הללו כן ובגודו, הללו בתי כר שופר, הללו בני מכנות, הללו בתוף מחול, הללו במינים מעוגב, הללו בסיסי השמע, הללו בסיסי תרועה, כל הנשמה את הללויה, הללויה, כל הנשמה את הללויה, הללויה, אשמי האיש, אשר לא הלך, ועצת רשעים, ורחתים לא עמד, ומשה אבלוסי לא ישב, דימה תורה 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 Okay. Who's the first speaker? Um, okay, Shmuel Maimon, my brother. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Danny was a Hanan Meon. He never looked for Kavon. He, um, he actually ran away from it. And for him to pass away at such a time when there can't be any fanfare 
because of the virus, he went out according to his personality the way he would want without fanfare and without so many people being able to show him the proper respect that he deserved. My father growing up, he grew up in Seattle, Washington. As a young boy, he went to school some days a week because he had every week he had a trip day. So he would go on a trip with his parents every week. And a few times a month, he also had an uncle day. <laughs> also. Now we can see Uncle Dave. And, our, and my father used to do mischief right on the walls, but according to his parents, he was an angel. He never did anything wrong. That was Jack. <laughs> so um, after, when my father was 15, he went to Nye Stroll in Baltimore in Yeshiva. Um, his mother was Rabbi Ruderman at that time. And he was there till 22 when he got married. He got to see the clock from Rabbi Ruderman. And then when he got married, he went to Yeshiva Parat Yosef in the old city for three years. After that, he came back to America and there was a rabbi on 65th Street, a shul, a small shul with a house in the back. He lives in the back. And because of the rabbi in the shul, he also was a rabbi in Fisay, New Jersey, Tanakh Yezid. He had a lot of different jobs in the area. But then he, he was a rabbi in the shul till my sister Aviva was born. Aviva was born in 1985. Well, she appreciated that. On the first day of Sukkot. And my father went, was in the hospital with my mother, obviously, in the first night. And overnight, he walked home from Mount Sinai Hospital, which is 150, 105th Street in Manhattan, all the way back home overnight to Avenue M, 914 Avenue M, that's the 10th Avenue M. My mother was Brooklyn and the Manhattan knows that's a far walk. He always used to say, my feet still hurt today from that walk. <laughs> <laughs> he was walking overnight and he said that everybody that was there, all the drunkards on the bridge and the people that are not so nice, all, all were scared of him and moved to the other side of the bridge. Maybe they thought the love was a sword and his throat was a bomb. I, I don't know. He said, he was scared of him. Um, after, when he was born, he stopped being the rabbi on 65th Street, and he opened his store, you know, the bookstore called Donald of Sefer. Um, it was all Chitanika stuff. He used to sell um, all the Sephanim, um books, um, uh, uh, Torah tapes, Tefillin, Sitzit, all Chitanika. And he used to go delivering gifts all the time. And I would go with him many times. I was my quality time with my father. Sometimes my mother went, sometimes my brother went, sometimes other siblings went, but I like to go because I got to spend quality time with my father when I would go. And I remember going before the school year to all the schools also to deliver them and the books that they needed for the year, get my own, lock credits, and all the things that they needed. And I remember my father used to tell Mach Zorim also. People used to call Enev Yom Tov. You know, Mr. Dama Fseke, on Yom Kim, Enev Yom Kibur, we need a Mach Zorim. We need a Mach Zorim. Okay, come, get it. You put my name on it? Not now. It's, we don't have time now. We, we'll do it after the holiday. Bring it back. We'll do it after the holiday. We'll do it after the holiday. We'll do it after I remember the first time the Shavu Mach Zorim came out. He got 4,000 of them. It was 400 boxes. And I said, take them all out, print them, and then repack them and send them out. They were all sold before they even came in. And this Friday night was our highlight. Because we used to, my father used to sit on his lap, each one on one knee, and we would sing songs. And on Friday night, it was, it was, the, it was, Shabbat night, we loved that night. It was the best. Now our father also on Friday nights, we were trying to sleep. So we used to see through the basement. He would come down and he would tell us the stories. And usually it was the same story called the fishing story. Every week, 
But we love the story. We, we never got tired of it. Even though he said it again and again and again, we loved it. We never got tired of it. Um, my father used to go to share once a week from his Rebbe Rabbi Nekritz in, um, on Avenue Ali, and he's, and he's 50, I think. And when he, come, when he came home, he used to buy uh, barbecue potato chips and soda. And when he come home, we all have a little snack because my father loved potato chips. He used to buy it for us as a tree also. Well, my father had me hand after Pesach, or after Pesach, he throws money on the floor. He throws money, candy, and grass on the floor. It's called in Ladino, Krasinawa. And he says also a paragraph in Ladino when he's throwing the money, and everybody scrabbles on the floor and tries to get as, money, as much money and candy as they could get. After we got a little old for it, he started doing it for the grandkids. Actually, my nephew today told his mother, I'm sorry that we're, getting, that we're not going to have Prasinawa this year. I was looking forward to it the whole year. And, um, and just, I just, just how many people this week were, that were calling and, and reaching out to me. And how many people knew my father and how many people he touched. It's amazing. My phone is in my home. And in my family, I live in Richmond, Virginia. People who didn't know him and were calling me, or I was on Zoom for them so they could see me. They were, they were asking me about my father. They were amazed by the things that he did, his devotion to learning. When he was learning, he was in a trance. I would go visit him sometimes at home when he was learning. He was so engrossed. I would say, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. Finally, after a few times of me saying, Daddy, he would look up and finally realize that someone was there. My father, on my, when we were younger, in the winter, we used to go to learning groups, me and my brother, and we would get tickets every Moteh Shabbat. And we'd get tickets and we'd bring them home, and my father would make raffles for all the kids. He used to call, when we won, he called it a booby prize. He used to get paper clips and pens and little things that really weren't worth anything, but we were all very happy with it. And whenever we wanted something, we would ask my father first, because he'll always say yes. He never said no. So we knew to ask him and not my mother. And my father, just a little personal story, my father used to tell me, I'm always the best sometimes. And one other thing, at one time I went to, my father wanted to do something that I wanted to do. He used to learn with me every week, but one week he said, I want to do something that you want to do. I said, fine, I want to go to a Knicks game, New York Knicks, the basketball. I said, okay. So he went, my father went in his black hat, or a tie, jacket, hat and jacket. I'm like, Daddy, why are you wearing a hat and jacket to a game? It's a Knicks. It's not, we're not going to, to learn or to school or anything. So he said, look, this guy does his hair pink. This guy does his hair purple. This guy yellow. This guy's wearing this. This guy's dressed like this. Everybody in New York is crazy. So they'll think I'm crazy also. <laughs> and my brother Yako, my father used to take him to, to school in the morning when he had me in seventh and eighth grade. He used to take him early. My father would pray early in the Atelier My mother would pray a little later, but he would give him a ride. And if you were ready or almost ready, he would wait for you a couple of minutes. So I used to ask Yaakov, where are you holding? Yaakov was always to say, it sucks. Because sucks, you said that he's ready. So my father would always wait for him, even if he was still in bed, because he's up to his socks. So he's almost ready. Even now, today, when my father used to call him, where are you holding? My socks. As the, as the years went on, it got very hard for my father to work. But he still worked very hard, even with all his pain, because he wanted to try and provide for the family. He used to give bar mitzvah lessons to, to different boys. And they would come and from him 
teach them over and over again. We used to uh, learn their part by heart also because we used to hear him repeating it and repeating it and repeating it. So we learned everybody's parasha by heart. Yeah. My father used to like to go early to shul because if you go on time and you have to get ready to pray, you're late. So you have to go early, put on your tefillin, get your sidur, and say korbanot so that when they start my tikkun and my you're ready to pray with them. Because if you go on time, you'll, you'll be late. You're not on time. After my father, it got too hard for my father. He couldn't run the business anymore. He stopped. He closed his business. And he went into full-time learning. He decided, now I can't work anymore. So what else am I going to do now? I'm going to learn. And he went to Mikdash. He used to go to Yeshiva. At first, every day, he would go to Mikdash and learn all day. He was part of the Kolel without pay, but he used to go and learn there all day. Then after the years went on and he couldn't, and he couldn't go anymore, he would, um, he would, um, he would learn from home. He used to have, he had this old wooden stender in his house, maybe 40 years old. He, had, he would sit on the couch uh, with a table next to, him, next to him with all his books and his old wooden stender that he would, that he would learn from all the time. Every day that I went to see him, he was with that stender on him learning. And also, even when my father were on Shabbat day, every week, 2.30 in the afternoon, whether Shabbat was at 4 o'clock, Shabbat 8 o'clock, 2.30 in the afternoon, um, either someone would walk him or rail him to Mikdash or whichever shul was closed, and he would learn from 2.30 to Mincha without exception. I used to you know, walk, walk him a lot of times. I'd get him his books, get him his tea, sit him down, and he'd just sit and learn till Mincha. My father had tremendous Yisurin. Tremendous. He, had, he was in pain for a long time in life. He had different things going on. Issues with his hands, his legs, his heart. He, he was in pain all the time. But when you ask him, where are you? I mean, how are you? He always said, I'm wonderful. Ne he never complained at all. Never. Um, I'm going to close with this. Um, in a couple of days, it's Pesach. We're all going to say, Whoever wants, come and eat. My father's house, he never locked the door. He was living in a apartment building, but he never locked the door. It was always open. Anytime you want to go, call the chrin yetevechu. Whoever wants, come and eat. His house was like that all year round. Not just twice a year, like we say it. Noach Hashem to the Chenem Ben Reina. Beautiful, beautiful. Wow. Thank you, Rabbi. Shmuel really spoke beautiful, Shmuel. Shmuel, you spoke beautiful. Beautiful. Wow. Thank you, Shmuel. Now, is there anything I can say? Okay. Kohelet tells us, Tov la lechet el bet evel mi bet mishteh. It's better to go to a house of mourning than to a wedding. Ba'asher hu sofa adam, ve'achai yiten el libo. For this is the end of man, ve'achai yiten el libo. And a person should take it to heart. With the demise, with the passing of Rabbi Mark Maimon, I am certainly one that has taken it to heart. That's all. To think about Mark, Alava Shalom, Rabbi Mark Maimon, and my history with him, which I would like to share with you for a few moments. To me, it's days which I will cherish for the rest of my life. I was a young boy of 15 years old, going into 10th grade to Baltimore, Maryland, to Nair Israel, to Nair Yisrael. I was a boy from the Syrian community going to a total Ashkenaz yeshiva. When I came there, the principal of the school, Rabbi Joseph Tender, Alava Shalom, um, after he accepted me, he called in 
in those days known as Mark Maimon to his office. Mark Maimon was in the Bet Midrash, which I really didn't understand what that meant. He was introduced to me that somebody who was in the Rosh Yeshiva's class, the Rosh Yeshiva Shehud, Rabbi Rudiman. And the rabbi told me, Rabbi Tendler told me, if you have any problems or any issues, turn to Mark Maimon. And Mark immediately took to me, talked to me, spoke to me, and I thought that would be it. But every single day, more than once a day, he would approach me. I was in high school, he was in higher learning, and he would approach me every day to see how I was faring. Um, within the course of the year, there was 20 of us, 20 Syrian boys in their Israel. Now you could imagine 20 Syrian boys together what kind of mischief they could make. And mischief we did. And every time we were in trouble, it was Mark Maimon who bailed us out of trouble. Whatever we needed, whatever it was, whatever adjustment we needed, whatever else we needed, whether it was physical, materialistic, or spiritual, Mark Maimon was there for all of us. He, Mark, until Mark Maimon got married, we were there in the yeshiva with him. For over two years, we went to his wedding, and you would think that after that, he moved to Israel, we wouldn't hear from him. He still kept in touch with me. And over the years, over the years, I've seen Mark, I've spoken to him, I've spoken to him on many, many, many occasions. And I have to tell you, Mark lived a remarkable life like you just heard from his son, Shmuel, okay? He had a life of Yisurin, Yisure Iyov, terrible suffering. If there was anybody who would be allowed to complain about their lot, who would ask for a handout or to say, hey, why don't you pay attention to me? Why don't you do anything for me? It was Mark Maimon, but he never did. Never, ever, as Shmuel said, Whenever I saw Rabbi Maimon over the years, Rabbi Mark, how are you? Wonderful. Great. You need anything? Nothing. I'm good. This was the amazing thing. He was our teacher when we were young in high school, and he was our teacher now. Our, te our teacher in Yisurim, in suffering, on how to eat suffering. Mark Maimon was the greatest Rebbe in how to eat Yisurim, suffering in this world. And suffering he did. What did he do during those years of all the suffering? As Shmuel said, he went to learn Torah. As hard as it was, he went to learn Torah. What I want to tell you. Praiseworthy is the person who Yisurina thrown on him and he learns from his Torah. This was Mark Maimon. He was a true Tamid Hacham in every, every, every sense of the word, never, never complained, never said it hurts, never said it's lonely, never said, how come you never come visit me? Never said, hey, I did so much for you in your earlier years, why aren't you around? Never, ever, always appreciated. I had many semachot in my life, and I would invite Mark. My children got married, I had many, many, many uh, brisses, many grandchildren, and I would, write, I, I would invite Mark to the Simahot. Who ever thought he would come? How difficult it was for him to get around. Who ever thought that he would show up? Sure enough, at those Simahot, as difficult as it was for Mark to walk, he would come just to say Mazal Tov, just to sit and share the Simha for a few minutes. He was truly an Eved Hashem. If do it Hashem be Simha. He served Hashem with true Simha. And I just want to say that Mark, as your son said, you were humble your entire life and you left this world in a very humble manner, in a very humble manner. And now, now you're in Olam Abba. You're reaping from your rewards. Le fum sara agra. According to the suffering is the reward. You suffered plenty. Your children, Baruch Hashem, gave you nachat. And you have grandchildren walking in the way of Hashem. And Bezrat Hashem, your, your neshama will soar through your children and your grandchildren. 
and Bezat Hashem, you will see no more suffering. Lenetzach Netzachim, forever and ever, you will bask in the divine presence. Teher Nishmatot Tzirunan B'Tzirun Ha'chaim. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi Zeri. Okay, now my father's cousin Steve Ammon, Rabbi Steve, will you please speak for us? <clears throat> okay, Mark and I were born as cousins. But since kindergarten, we've been like brothers. <clears throat> From age five to our 20s, we were always in the same school and same class. While we made many of our own friendships, we always hung out together. We almost had our own code, where either of us only needed to say one word that alluded to a funny story, and we spent and we'd spend the next half hour laughing together. Mark had a good number of healthy years where he was considered a great yeshiva boy, the budding Talmud Chacham. He was loved by his rabbis and all those who knew him. Then Mark had a good number of challenging years. Just know that during these years, he was the exact same Mark. He had the, <coughs> excuse me, he had the same sense of humor uh, and the same upbeat attitude. Many times, <coughs> I asked Mark for a beracha. Yeah, he would say, sure, Steve, what do you need? Then I would look at him and feel like an idiot. What did I really need? Mark <coughs> was always content. He never let his disability decide for him if she, he should go to Minyan, go to to, a Torah class, go to a wedding and dance for the Chatan, or open a Gemara and learn all day. I remember sitting with him once at a wedding. I was very tired and convinced myself that it was not necessary for me to get up and dance. Suddenly Mark said, Steve, help me up. We're supposed to dance for the Chatan. I felt like such a loser, but Mark didn't know what I was thinking. So I said, sure, Mark, let's go and dance. That evening, he influenced me to do the right thing when attending a wedding. Mark would take distant trips to Israel or Seattle, while most people in his condition would not even get out of bed. Mark was always excited to have his kids over, especially for Pesach. <coughs> for the second Seder, where he was the host. Once I was sitting in his apartment with him, right before Pesach, and said, Mark, how are you going to pull off a Seder? He said, I have a table, I have some chairs, Rachel is doing some cooking, <coughs> and everything will be great. I'm willing to bet that not too many people prepare for a Seder with such a calm and positive attitude. On many levels, Mark was a great inspiration to me. His outlook on life was far superior to that of most people. I often wondered how was Mark able to ignore all his challenges and remain so upbeat and constructive. Recently, I was praying Shacharit, and a pasuk suddenly struck me. It's a pasuk that I've said many times. The pasuk reads, Yismach le mevakshay Hashem. Those who seek Hashem are happy of heart. Mark <coughs> was Mabakesh Hashem. He focused on the importance of spirituality in life. What was important to Mark was that he was able to pray, learn Torah, do mitzvot, do chasem, and to care about others. His physical well-being was secondary. As long as he was able to do <coughs> what Hashem wanted, it did not make a difference how difficult it may be to accomplish the task. Our Torah tells us the praise of two famous 
biblical people, Moshe Rabbeinu and Aharon the Kohen Gadol. Regarding Aharon, the Torah tells us that he had no jealousy, nothing whatsoever. The Torah also tells us that Aharon never changed his daily routine. He always valued the spiritual above the material. Mark had both of these qualities. Regarding Moshe Rabbeinu, the Torah tells us that he was the Eved Hashem, the true servant of Hashem. The Kiddush Hashem, Mark made, by never complaining, earned him <coughs> that title also. We are told that both Moshe and Aaron left this world through a kiss from Hashem, the smoothest form of transition between this world to the next. Martu, passing away in his sleep, merited a smooth transition from this world to the next. I can't believe that I can't pick up a phone and call Mark. This pains me a lot. However, I must be happy for Mark because he's spending Pesach. He spent... <clears throat> Excuse me, spending Pesach with Hashem. <laughs> we, we ask him for one <clears throat> for one last favor. That is to put in a good word for us up there. And tell Hashem to send Mashiach so we can, so that we can reunite. Yezichro Baruch, Macha Hashem Dimam Yalko Panim. I just want to end because I think I can't see everyone on a iPhone, but I believe Rabbi Wadish may be part of the audience. Have a <coughs> have a very personal Hakarata Tov to Rabbi Wadish that he took care of Mark throughout his difficult years, like nobody I can imagine. Hello. I know Hello. that I was talking to Mark once, and I said, Mark, what are you doing for Shabbat? He says, I go to Rabbi Wadish. I said, okay. A few weeks later, Mark, what are you doing for Shabbat? Go to Rabbi Wadish. Mark, what are you doing? I'm going to Rabbi Wadish for Shabbat. I said, you know, like, uh, this keeps going on forever. Mark says, I got to tell you something I can't believe. He says, I was there last week, and one of the kids said, Daddy, how come we don't have any company this week? So Mark turned and said, I'm company. And he said, you're not company, you're part of the family. And you don't know how good he felt. <coughs> that he was totally, totally at home and, and well taken care of. So uh, for whatever it's worth, You certainly have my admiration forever. May Hashem bring comfort to all those mourning. Amen. Amen. Is there anyone who would like to add anything? Mordechai Ammon, maybe? Okay, Mordechai. Yes. Mordechai, yeah. Mordechai, yeah. He was. Hello, hello. Yeah, Mordechai. Yeah. Can I say a few oh, words? Yeah,
Just say a few words. Yes, please. In the sun, general, we know, is a time that we're not generally allowed to say words of hesped. Um, that's something that for Tamidei Chachamim, they, made it, they make a, a drop of an exception to the rule. When someone is considered a Tamid Chacham, that's an exception to the rule. Mark Maimon, as uh, his son-in-law was shocked that I was calling him Mark Maimon, he says, don't you know him as Rabbi Maimon? I said, let me tell you. There's not many people named after Mark or Romy. There's about four or five of us, and I'm one of them. I'm one of the Marks. The difference is I spell my name with a C, and uh, he spelled it with a K. From my earliest uh, memories as a child, going to the home, the Maimon house on Folomo A trips, I will never forget the impression we had as children. You were entering a home that was built on Torah in every sense of the word. The foundation of the house was Torah in the real sense as well, as if you go to the basement, you would see dial a safer downstairs. You go down to a basement, which was not, not only in the literal sense, the foundation of the home, but when you went down the feeling to walk through all those sefarim, and if you'd be lucky, you'd have Mark come downstairs and he would walk from shelf to shelf. Look, Mordechai, that's a new Pnei Hoshua. That is the new Ritva. That is the new print of the Rashba. So I was making like I was interested. I said, wow, the new Pnei Hoshua, the new Rashba, the new Ritva. I made out like I was excited. I was all of 12 years old. I didn't really know what these Sephardim were, but if he was excited, I would act excited also. Came my bar mitzvah the following year, and guess what I got? A new Pnei Yoshua, a new Ritva, and a new Rashba. All three sets. It dawned on me recently that it's not normal to give a bar mitzvah boy three sets of Sephardim. And the only reason why I remember it so well is because the sticker's in there, so you can't forget. The dial is safer sticker. And it says to my, the fellow Mark, Mazal Tov, may you grow up to be a great Tamid Chacham. We grew, I grew up in a family together with my siblings of 11 children, Bli and Hara. We have seven boys, four girls. My father grew up in a family with him and his sister, Auntie Estelle. But then there was Mark Maimon. The cousins, there was A.B. Maimon, there was the angels, If it, the, for some Again, reason or another, which we can't explain, but the roommate that he discussed our entire life was always Mark Maimon. We would, my father would sometimes begin a story at the Shabbat table about a roommate that never took a shower in six months. And Mark and my father lifted the man up and they threw him in the shower. And they, they couldn't finish the story. They would laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. And they never could finish the story. So I said, what's the, you know? So one day Mark told me, he says, you don't understand what's so funny. He came out and put back the same underwear. <laughs> but this was, this was Mark Maimon. Life was funny. Life was a joke. Life was in a humorous way, but not very far from a joke. But Mark, in also another sense, the beauty of him was, the beauty of him was, as my father mentioned, every holiday was set by his key words. He would call up before Shavuot. He never missed once before Shavuot saying the word, Lazarus. They would say Lazarus and they would laugh for a full hour. There was presumably a story about this man, Lazarus, who I'm sure you all know better than I do. I actually once saw his house in Seattle. Uh, he would stay up. For nights and he would sleep for nights and nights in preparation 
for Shavuot to stay up the whole night. But when it came to Shavuot, he was late to shul the next morning because he was still preparing to stay up the whole night. He slept through the whole Shavuot because he was preparing to stay up the whole night. Usually, and this is the point I want to bring out with this, usually when you have a person who suffers so much and trains himself to put a smile on his face, usually the smile is a more mature smile. It's a smile of understanding what life's really about. But Mark lived under the impression of Misila Isharim. Adam lo nivra ela lehit aneg al Hashem v'leyanot miziv shchinato. A person was only created to gain pleasure from Hashem. And if you were born to gain pleasure from Hashem, he would enjoy the humor of a young child a young child, because even that was funny. If life, if life was perfect, if life was considered good, if life was blessed in his eyes, it meant that it was blessed as a little child, not a man that suffered so much so now can smile at mature jokes. He remained young his entire life. I cannot believe that he was 70 years old. I couldn't believe it. I said, Mark, really? But what Mark gave to the world was a gift of life, was a gift of understanding life, was a gift of true happiness, happy, happy with the little amounts, happy with close to nothing. I sent the text to my family, and I'll finish off with this. I did not know that the text would go to the rest of the family, but Mark Maiman if there was one person who would be willing to give up his life to go upstairs before Hashem and say, Hashem, please, this coronavirus is a little taxing on the people, that would be Mark. And when did he pass away? In a time when we're all quarantined. Mark was quarantined for 30 years. We're first getting used to the second week of it, the third week of it. 30 years. He was quarantined, but his spirit was so, rose so much above his quarantine, he trained us that we can live an exciting life with less. How quarantine is a physical state, but the mind is the real thing that has to be free. And we know, en ben chorin el amisha osek batora. Someone who is free is only truly free is if he's free from his desires, if he's osek ba Torah, if he lives by the dictate of the Torah. Mark, you taught us a lesson that we will never forget. You lived a life that was more inspiring than practically anybody ever met. And just like Abraham Avinu, and this is hard to say, but just like Abraham Avinu was considered Abraham Avinu because he knew how to be Yitzaveh et penav, b'nei penav, u b'nei banav acharav. He trained Mark, not only lives a life of no complaint, but he trained his children how to do the same. His children, you will never hear a complaint from any one of his children, ever. They're the happiest people. I know Yaakov forever. He's my practical brother, Yaakov. We speak to each other before every holiday. We never miss that phone call. The phone number changes every time, but the phone call never changes. I have maybe a hundred people on my on my phone on the Yaakov Maimon. Mordechai, thank you. I love you, sweetheart. And I love you too. And all the children, you know how great you are. You were raised by two great parents, your mother and your father. And God willing, you'll be give your mother strength and you'll get strength from her. And Bezat Hashem, we should finish this whole story with the missing page of the coming of Mashiach while we realize that life was always perfect. Thank you all for listening. Amen. 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 Should we say Hashkaba? Yes. Okay. Tov Shem Mishem Tov.
מיום המוות, מיום היוולדו. סוף דבר הכל נשמע את המימרץ ואותם השמות, כי זה כל האדם. יעלזו חסידים וחבוד ירנו השם אותם, המרחם על כל בריאותיו. הוא יחוס ויחמול ורחם על נפש רוח שמה של מרדכי בן רינה, רוח אדוני תנחנו בגן עדן, הוא וכל בני ישראל אשר עמו בכלל הרחמים והסליחות, וכן יהי רצון ונאמר אמן. זה המוות הנצח, הוא מחה אדוני לאי דמה מעל כל פנים, וירפא את עמו ישים מעל כל הארץ, כי אדוני דיבר, יחיו מתיך, נבלטי, יקימונה, קיצו ובני שחור עפר. כי טל אורות עליך, והארץ לפעמים תפיל. והוא רחום יחפל עוון, ולא ישחית, והרבה להשיב אפו, ולא יעל כל חמתו, שנוחמו מן השמיים. אמן. אני רוצה לשאול עוד פעם. אני בעיה לנצח משניות, פליז קנטט מי, תתק משניות, ולא נשמע את המנוח. הנאמר הוא 347. 9628505. Please call and take a masechet. The line is not my father. Please. One more, the telephone one more time, please. 347-962-8505. Yaakov, will it be the same number if we call tomorrow? Yes. <laughs> Can I ask you to share that with uh, the Seattle community so we can share that? Yes. We are saying the same words as Neshama. Neshama is soul. Neshama is a part of the Lord of Torah. You say that, it's a, it brings the soul higher up in heaven. Who would not want to do that for the Lord of Torah? So please call me. My number is 347-962-8505. You take a couple of chapters. You take even one Mishnah, even one. I don't care how little or how much you take. Everything is appreciated, and it brings us so close to God. So please call me. Let me know. I have a list available, and we will give you what you Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I appreciate it all. Amen. Thank you. Uh, Amen. Thank you, Al. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Al. All of my cousins in New York. Amen. 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 Thank you. 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 All of my cousins in New York. You probably don't know. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank you. 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 Thank <laughs> 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 No, that's not Shem 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 Shem. And to all the girls and, and all the boys, we always love the Amaimans. We always felt so good. We were part of our family. We were together. We remember all the lava malkas we used to have together, and we had a lot of fun. Yeah.
Your father was so special when he used to call Steve <laughs> to talk. I used to be so excited. The last time I spoke to him was a, uh, a, uh, about two weeks ago. He, just, he called Steve in the car. And I said, Steve, I just want, I told Mark, I just want you to know that I love when you call Steve. You don't know how much Steve loves you. That was the last thing I said to him. Wow. Yeah. He was really one special person. One special man. Frank. Amazingly special. Hi, Frank. It's, it's like, you, you can't, it, it, he was one of a kind. <laughs> I just want you to know you had a very special father. He set a very good example for everybody. Thank you. Raina and Sylvia, I wanted to call you. I wanted to tell you. I didn't get to speak to you. Raina, where are you? I'm going to call you, Raina. Raina, where are you? I'm going to call you, Raina. To the whole family. To the whole family. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. To the whole family. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. 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 I still pray from one of the, the, the books. When I'm in my basement, I pray from one of the Dial of Safer Sidurim, the little ones. Do you remember the little ones? Your, yes. your, your parents used to send it whenever a child was born. We used to get it. So I still have, I dive in from one of them when I'm in the basement. Yeah. It's my little, yeah. Very special. Very, very special. Very, very, he really was very, very, very special. Yeah, hope that people the same person. Yes. It's like, if you could. I think when, you know, he's there, the nose looks big, yeah. but even without even that, without. it doesn't look good. Yeah. That's good. Steve, thank you so much for your words. They were really. Uh, thank you so much. I know it was hard for you. But I think I'm going to miss those phone calls. It's, your father used to call it Steve. I have another one for you. Just one laugh. of the Seattle jokes. I used to love to hear them. They were funny over nothing. You know what I mean? It was so funny. <laughs> Does he also tell the story about Frank and uh, Fr Fred and um, what's yeah, the name? Fred. Fred. Yeah. 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 That's the piss up story. That's I want to hear it. <laughs> No, I want to hear from someone from Seattle. <laughs> Sally. Sally. No, just tell us the story of Fred and Mrs. Khan. Sally, let's hear it. Oh, oh, oh. Fred and Mrs. Khan. It's the only fan. Do they see it? Sally, you say the story and I'll do the last. <laughs> I wish I could tell the story, but I don't know. <laughs> Another unwritten uh, story is about visiting to Seattle for Shabayam. Mark was, there was an anchor. And so Ali, him. Well, there's David. Everything you talked about. Well. Well, is this our David? That's our David. Hi, David. I think it's our David. Wait a minute. Yeah, that's David. Okay, wait, I'm, I'm still waiting for the story, Auntie Sally. Can you hear me? Yes. Mrs. Khan used to go to work. She used to work at Bon Marche, and when she had to eat her Pesach food, she went like this and covered her face so no one would see what she was eating. Took a video of this. But Fred, who wasn't even Jewish, used to take it and eat it right out loud so everybody can see it. <laughs> that was not a story of the... She used to tell us about Fred cleaning for Vida Levy. Right. Thank you, Andrew. That was our Pesach entertainment. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I met you. 
Ya, ya. Yeah, Hi, Kim. Oh. Oh. Thank you. Hi. Do remember how you helped us cleaning up? Yeah, I think so. Oh, yes. Rusty, so nice to see you. Thank you. I wish it was under better circumstances, but bye. -bye. Oh, nice. My oh. mom and cousins say we remember those the get-togethers on Kalamoid. Sometimes yeah. in your house, sometimes in your house, and all the and I can't take time to stop that more memories. Hello. She looks hi. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. She missed. She listening to uh, the the Levi of uh, father. Today was a love not the love I had, the, uh, the like, um, the burial, the camera. The burial, yeah. yeah. I'll call you later, okay. Auntie Sally, I heard that one. Oh, I thought you couldn't hear me anymore. I thought that was all. On the cast, did you wait in the car? What do you want me to get? What? Everyone, it's midnight over here in a... It's midnight over here in well, Auntie Sarah's, so good night to you all and thank you for listening to our family in Hashemayim. What about for you? I have a, you see me? Where's that on? Aviva, I can't see you, no, where are you? I have some made on this one last night. Aviva, wait, wait, wait for me then, wait. No. Tell you guys. I'm going to get into Pesach stuff, right? Yeah, Kharosa, lettuce. Yeah, Ashton, we hear your whole thing. What do you need, Kharosa, lettuce, yeah? Moment of Hashemayim. Thank you. I muted her. She can't Asa, answer. Where are you? I can't see you. I don't know how to get myself over here. Ask David. You see me? No, I don't see you. What, what's your name? I don't see you. How are you? How are you? Come to my phone. Hello, Aviva. I'm on the telephone. I see your house, Aviva. Oh, well. Where's Huda? Huda, right next to where I am. I can't see you, but so it's not going to help. One second, one second. One second. Sarah, you see me now? Do I look like you? No, that's you. Oh, yeah. Hi. No, we don't look alike. No, sorry. Oh, we don't look alike. Oh, okay, no, no, really not. No. Oh, okay, fine. Like we have to ask Auntie Sally. Oh, okay. So Auntie Sally, do we need to sit on? I look alike. Oh, look, we're next to each other now. Okay, so ask Auntie Sally if we look alike. So where is she, Auntie Sally? Did you go off? No, she's there. She's still there. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Auntie Sally? She's still there. Really? She's muted. Oh, she's unmuted. For twins. No, she's not muted. No, now she's unmuted. Yes, Aviva, you look like Sarah. Oh, Sarah looks like me? Yes, Sarah looks like you. Right. The other way around. Right. That's, that's all right. Okay. Well, it was so nice to see you. I'm so far away. Yeah, okay, everyone, really, it's late over here, so good night, okay? Shemuel, you spoke very nicely. Oh, yeah, Shemuel, you did. I forgot. Oh, Shemuel, you did beautifully. Nice, Shemuel, I'm still holding my socks. Don't worry about it. Yeah, you're holding my socks? 100%. Yeah, you're holding my socks? Don't worry about it. Okay, so you're holding my socks? Yeah, I'm gonna... Shemuel, no one said this was no shock. Oh, yeah, you didn't say that. Don't worry, you said it's <laughs> you said the show of shame yet. It's all better. But this is really no shock. No shock. No shock. Yeah, but um, what was I going to say? Bottom line. Did you get your show? Where are you going? Oh, what happened, Mother? You're fine? Thank you. Okay, I'm going to sign off now. Thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate it. Okay, bye, everybody. Good night. Bye, everybody.
Sally was such a good sister. David, thank you. That was very, very nice. It yes. made my heart good. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Bye. Sally, you were such a good sister. Thank you. You really took care of Mark. I always have been a good sister to him. I know, and you too, Rosie. Rosie. Say goodbye, Rosie. Say goodbye. Take care. You two were great, you girls. We knew everything that went on. Oh, yeah. Huh? What holidays would you? Yeah, because I want to see kids. Where is everybody? Yeah, but I want to see who that. Where is she? Aviva, show yourself again. Well, it had to be either... Wait, let me see if my phone is still on. You'll see them. Yes. Hi, David. Hi, I want no, first I have to finish my kitchen. Wait. Oh, okay. Yeah, where are you? I didn't see you the whole time. Oh, I don't see anybody. Send me a video, Aviva. What? Oh, here we go. Wait, wait, I saw everybody. Wait, where did everyone go? Okay. Hi, everybody. What are you eating over there? Okay. I still don't see who does. I see. Is everybody looking at Florida on the palm trees? Yeah. That I no, see more. the top of your car, Esther. We don't see the Florida on the palm trees. You don't see the palm trees? Oh, now. Oh, beautiful. So what am I supposed to show you? My messy bedroom? Yeah. And Here's Huda, man. Here's Trouble Bubble. I love you. But Abigail's downstairs baking. Oh, okay, good, at least. Yeah. At least you got a baker. We're doing oh, three packs. yellow crocs, I saw you. Uh -huh. We're doing three packs tonight. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Three packs. I, I think I'm making that tomorrow night. Let's see, I'm you don't know what three packs is? Okay, bye, bye everybody. Here we see. Bye. Three packs. I know. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, so I'm making three packs. I'm making three yeah. pots tomorrow night. I'm making uh, three pots tomorrow night. Okay. Sorry, I'm not. Yeah, good night, everybody. Have a good day. Enjoy. Thank you, Mom. Good night, Auntie Sally and Auntie Rosie. Bye, Auntie Rosie. Bye, Auntie Rosie. Rosie, can hear you. Oh, yeah, I see they're on mute. Okay, bye. Bye, Bye. Leave meeting. Hello. Oh, okay. I know I don't want to show my face. I'm wearing a mask. I have to go. I have to go out here. There she is. I see you I had to go. I had to go to the doctor, so I put on the mask. Okay, so you're fine. I don't want to see. I don't want anyone to see my my mask. It's fine, Esther. Okay. Another I was showing you Florida before when we were driving. Ooh. Yes, we saw. It could be in the nice weather. It's very cold here. I was showing. I was showing the water, the palm trees. The vacuum outside. Or someone was vacuuming their car. Oh yeah. Oh. 
It's the first time I'm out, out of the house for a month. In the month. Yeah. I know. You know? I haven't been out, so. I was only out for the Vallada every day. That's right. So this was important that I go to the doctor on top, you know. No, of course. What about um? Did did someone tape it? Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it was taped. So we that have a boat uh, 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 now, but it's being retaped right now. Yes. Yeah, how you can turn it off the recording? So how can I get a how can I get a copy of it? What? I don't hear you. You're breaking up. What? So how are recording it? So how do we get a copy? How do I hear from her? Talk to talk to Zahara? Yep. Zahara? Talk to talk to Zahara? Oh. Yeah. I don't know. Talk to her and find out. Could you ask her how we can get a copy? Um, I am not with her. And she can hear everything you're saying. When you talk to her, when you talk to her. I it says tonight. she was, It's midnight over there. Look at the chat. Look at the chat. It says... Tomorrow. It's in February. What? All right, Debbie, go to sleep. It's very late, honey. Go to bed. I don't want to sleep, though. No. Uh, sure. You sure? It's very late for you. Yeah, I'm okay, fine. So, yeah. yeah. Where do you live, David? He's in Israel. Yeah. Oh, you're in Israel! Israel. We're yeah. in Israel. Uh, Yerushalayim. Oh, wow. You know my son, David, right? Mm -hmm. No, I never went to him. I never spoke to him in my life. Oh, I feel bad. He speaks to Michael a lot. I go to Michael sometimes. I never went to. Wow. Unbelievable. Wow, it's so nice to see you. Only good things, though. Thank you. I feel bad. I, I'm, I'm getting, I'm enjoying watching your kids. <laughs> you should you should join on our chat, Jeannie, at four o'clock in the morning. I know, right? <laughs> You're such a sweetheart. <laughs> Did you put all this together, Silka? Um, I tried a little bit. Yeah. It was very, very, oh, very, you very, very you want to know something? It was very, very special and it was very needed. Yes. It was very needed for uh, you, whoever was so close to your father, it was very needed. It was a beautiful addition. He really was special. He was so special. I can't. We, we know he was I can't. I don't even. I can't even tell you how I always felt about your father. I, I, took, I, I was crying for three nights on my pillow. I, I can't. I have such a hard time with it. Every time I go to sleep, I think of your father. I just cry. I, it's like you want everybody to know who your father was. Yeah. Well, we He's a great. Calls and texts nonstop. Yeah, yeah. He was really, he was really something, something great. Uh, it's like, it's like you can't even get tired of saying it, and you can't get tired of hearing it. He was great. I'm saying the theme that I'm saying is just how he never complained. Nothing. Right. How are you doing, Mark? Great. What I couldn't believe. He always said wonderful. 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 I could not believe it. I, I used to see him walking in the street when he, before he sat down, when he was first, you know, when he still was walking in the street. I, if I was at the corner, like in the car or something, I would shake. I was so scared he was going to fall, but he kept jogging along. Let me I tell you something, Jimmy. Tuesday, the way he went, the day he went to the hospital. I called him in the afternoon. Daddy, how are you feeling? Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. And I said to him, I said, no, you're not wonderful. He goes, I'm not. I said, no, you're not feeling well. He goes, oh, like, oh, you're right, maybe. Wow. No, said to me, wonderful. I had to say, no, you're not, you know? Exactly. Like, admit it. Yeah. Unbelievable. It's, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Like we said, yeah, no, he just has to be a Melitz Yosher 
Amen. 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 I'll tell you one thing. Looking at all you kids, you're wonderful kids. You really raise it in their You're wonderful children, and you could still keep doing them. They say after a person, I once heard this because when I lost my parents, I had to hear things. And I was told that after a parent passes away, that's when the real Kivunava M starts. Wow. Very, very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because you really have to keep doing, they can't do anything for themselves now. We have to keep doing our mitzvot and to raise their nashama and make it, you know, show, give him, because he can't do it anymore. Wow. So the mitzvot that we do will give him the, the lift him higher and higher. Oh, it's, wow. a, it's a big day. Isn't that nice? Yeah, it's very, a very, it makes you feel good because you don't say to yourself, it's over. It's not right. over. It's never, ever over. Take it from me. I lost my parents. I was very young, and it's never over. I lived my life 43 years ago, the day before your father passed away, with my mother's young side, 43 years. Until today, I speak about her like she is, is, would, like, just passed away. I'm telling you, yeah. your father could really live with you forever. I'm telling you. It's, it's, a, it's hard to hear it now, but it really it works. It's very important. I'm telling you, always talk to your children about him, and it's important for him. It's a waste. Of, it's a waste for them not to know who he was. Yeah, no, I'm so happy yeah. my kids know him, remember him, saw him all the time, because you know, yeah. my want to ask about the price in hour. Like, what? Are we going yeah. To like, what are you so. Yeah. The only thing I can tell you this year, the first year, we would be the hardest of passing now. It's the first year that nobody can make it. We make it also. Nobody can make it, so you could feel that you're not alone. Uh, what do you oh, mean? I'm sure. I'm do it yeah, because the father can't come to the house. The grandfather can't come to the papa can't come to the house, or you can't go to his right, house. Right, right. I told him I'll do it for him. What do you mean? Never know. I was missing that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. I know, right? It's it's a great man hug. I know he told Steve about it, and Steve started doing it. Mark told we're doing it for years because of your father. We've all because of your that. father. I can oh, that's funny. Yeah, I'm telling you, all because of your father. He told Steve, and that was it. We do it for years. The kids love it. My house packs in and forget it what goes on. Right, I hope yeah. yeah, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful minhag that he really gave over to Steve to continue to do. It's a beautiful. It comes from collecting money on the floor, but they love it. They love it. Oh, yeah. He was a special man, I'll tell you. I remember when I first saw your father, he was engaged to your mother, and I, she, I said, Helen, I want to see who your chatan is. So she tells me, yeah, yeah. I said, I never saw such a nice boy. I couldn't believe such a nice boy was around. <laughs> and I also, I never knew there were other spartans other than Syrian. I always thought it's only Syrian, only Syrian. Right. Yeah, he was such a nice guy. Oh, you found a nice guy like yourself. Yeah, yeah. And but happy birthday was this week, right? Happy yeah. Birthday. Well, he was should have. He made the shidduch with my sister Molly for us. Oh, did he? Yeah, your father. But Molly asked my sister Molly asked your father, "Do you have any nice cousins?" Because we knew Mark, your father. <laughs> he said, "Yeah, I do, Steve." And that's how it started. He did it. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, did all always keep close and, and and you know always be there for each other. Yeah, very very special example. I see you're all so firm and good. It's so beautiful to see. So beautiful. Where do you live, Esther? Well, I live in Lawrence, but right now I'm in Miami. Oh, you in, you went to Miami? I've been here since uh, December, and uh, I plan. I was supposed, I'm supposed to come home after Pesach, but I don't know what's going to be with the virus. Uh -huh. Exactly. I wanna. I don't wanna. I wanna give birth in New York, yes. and I don't wanna be in Korea. There's this too. Oh, Hi, wow, Hello, who's that? 
That was Auntie Sally. That's what I saw. Yeah. Hi, Esther. Hello. And how are you? How are you doing? I'm okay. <clears throat> oh. Oh, wow. okay. transitional. That's David. David, why are you still up? It's always fun. I know, I thought you were going to sleep. No, she's hot there. Hello, David. Hello, I'm sorry. David. Yeah, just a long beard. He got a lot of things. What is it? You just laugh to the sign off. Yeah, it is. I'll see you girls. Bye, Debbie. Have a good holiday. Easy. You should only make, make some effort and please let us know about them. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Be well. Thank you, honey. Thank you. Name who's Salon? Huh? Here, David. Here. Uh, I'm going to get a copy of it. Uh, Thank you. I can't call Zahara now. It's the middle of the night. I told David to ask her when he's uh, when he's uh, uh -huh. yeah, real. Everybody will get, get a recording. Don't worry. Everybody will get a recording. Okay, good. <laughs> Who's that? I'm on the chat. I'm the one hosting this. Who's that? Who just said I'm the one posting it? Not me. I asked if you said So how are you posting? She's host she's hosting the chat. Of course she's up. Oh, okay. I didn't know. Yeah, she is the host. So how is Zara? Well, yeah. I asked you still in the car. I'm in the car. So show this. Okay. You want to see Florida? I'll show you Florida. Ooh, I'll show you the palm yeah. trees. The palm trees. Okay. See the palm trees? I see. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, so we're driving home now. Oh. And now we're stopped by a red light by Tower 41. Tower 41 is a very famous tower in, in Florida, in Miami. Mm -hmm. It's a very famous building. A lot of people live there. It's a very big building, very famous. A lot of people know about it. There's a restaurant inside, so a lot of people know about it. Now, they didn't get up today, my, right? They just said my the father. There? Who's that? Their no. children. No. no, they just made it early. Yeah, OK. And now we're on Collins Avenue. We're coming up to where the hotels are, but they're all closed oh, we because, can't see because of the coronavirus. All, so we just you can just look at them, but they they're all locked. Oh, yeah, I don't do it. <laughs> it's late. <laughs> Here's the Eden Rock. And now we're coming up. They put a, they built a testing center for coronavirus over here. So this is a testing center. 
and then uh, we're over. We're almost by a building, almost home. Show the water. Yeah. There's the water across the street from my house and the boats. Mm -hmm. And now we're here's the water fountains, and we're going up the ramp to our building. Okay. Show the guard. <laughs> it's the guardhouse. And here's the guardhouse. They have to make sure that we live here as we come in. And they're very, they're being very strict. They don't let anybody in from outside. And if you're not a resident, or even if you are a resident, and you came from New York recently, they don't want you here. Oh, so gosh. they're being very, very careful with, um, you know, really protecting their, their. Um, Residents. And now we're in the garage, we're going to park, so I'm going to lose service, I think. So I'm going to sign off, but I'll talk to all of you. All right, Sarah called me. I'm going to go call her back. So good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. night. Good 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 night. All right, I love you all. Good night. Good night. It's only 5.30. Talk good night. What? No, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we're done. Okay, let it go off and well, nope, you're not done. Zara, if you're listening, you can turn it off.